Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection January 5, 2021 Tuesday, Memorial of St. John Newman, Bishop I pray that everyone will have a blessed year ahead of us. Let us pray that this pandemic will end soon and be back to normal. Let us pray for the frontliners who are fighting the enemy that we cannot see. Let us pray for the people who lost their lives, loved ones and livelihood because of this pandemic. Let us pray for one another. A blessed new year to everyone and may God bless us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. He gave of himself until there was nothing left to give. Today's saint worked like a mule. He studied, he wrote, he prayed, he preached, he traveled, he built, he founded, he guided, he taught. And then one day, carrying construction plans for his cathedral in Philadelphia to an office, he collapsed and died in the street. He had worked himself to death. He was 48 years old. St. John Newman was born in Central Europe in what is today the Czech Republic. Like many people born in small countries, he had to learn more than his native tongue in order to become a success. But St. John outdid himself. He learned seven languages in addition to his native Czech. He had a gift. Yet he found it hard to find a bishop to ordain him after he had completed his theological studies. He wrote to numerous bishops throughout Europe and to one on the other side of an ocean he had never seen. The other side of the ocean bishop wrote back, If you can get here, I'll ordain you. St. John got there and was ordained in 1836 by Bishop John Dubois of New York, himself a transplant from Paris, France. He was assigned to rural areas in upstate New York and was outstanding in a zeal for souls. But the isolation was a burden, and he felt the need for priestly community. So, he joined the Redemptorist Order and began many years of priestly service in Maryland. His intelligence, ability to preach and hear confessions in multiple languages, extraordinary work ethic, life of poverty, good nature, and general holiness were traits that all observed and all admired. He was named the fourth Bishop of Philadelphia in 1852. The city's growth was exploding, especially its Catholic population of immigrants. St. John threw himself into his work with no concern for his own well-being. He was a tornado of apostolic activity. He was everywhere. He did everything. The church benefited and grew at an extraordinary pace. But St. John did not benefit. His only gear was overdrive. Zeal for his house consumed him. Zeal for his house killed him, in fact. That is probably the way that he wanted it. St. John was buried in a Redemptorist church in Philadelphia. His reputation for holding is spread after his death. The faithful asked. The faithful received. The miracles were documented and Philadelphia had its saint. St. John Newman was canonized by Pope St. Paul, Virgin Islands. U.S. in 1977, an immigrant who was the first male American citizen to be raised to the altars. St. John, you left home and family to toil in the remote regions of the United States for the sake of the gospel. Your tireless dedication to the needs of the church is an inspiration to all, especially priests. Enkindle in the hearts of all priests the same fire of love that burned in your own. First reading. A reading from the first letter of John. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 to 10. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God. For God is love. In this way the love of God was revealed to us. God sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Psalms chapter 72 verse 1 to 2, 3 to 4 and 7 to 8. Let our response be, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Response. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people. Save the children of the poor. Response. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace. Tell the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Response. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 6 verse 34 to 44. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place and it is already very late. Dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy two hundred days wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel In today's text, he describes the banquet of life promoted by Jesus with the hungry crowds of Galilee that are in the desert. The contrast of this context is great and enlightens the text. In Mark's Gospel, the multiplication of the loaves is very important, and Jesus himself questions the disciples on the multiplication of the loaves. This is why it is worthwhile to observe and to reflect so as to discover what exactly is the importance of the multiplication of the loaves. Jesus had invited the disciples to rest a bit in a place in the desert. The crowds noticed that Jesus had gone to the other side of the lake, and they followed him and arrived there before he did. When Jesus, getting down from the boat, sees that large crowd waiting for him, he becomes sad because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This phrase recalls the sum of the Good Shepherd. Faced with these people without a shepherd, Jesus forgets to rest and begins to teach. He begins to be a shepherd. With his words, he guides the crowds in the desert of life. And in this way the crowd could sing, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Time went by and it began to be late and dark. The disciples were concerned and asked Jesus to send the people away. 
they affirm that there in the desert it is not possible to find anything to eat for so many people. Jesus says, give them some food yourselves. But they were afraid. Do you want us to go and buy bread for 200 denarii? The disciples seek a solution outside the crowds. For the crowds. Jesus does not seek the solution outside, but rather within the crowd and for the crowd and he asks. How many loaves do you have? Go and see. The answer is. Five loaves and two fish. It is very little for so many people. Jesus orders the crowd to sit down in groups and asks the disciples to distribute the bread and the fish. Everybody ate enough to be satisfied. It is important to observe how Mark describes this fact. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven, pronounced the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples to distribute it. This way of speaking makes the communities think about what? No doubt, this made them think about the Eucharist. Because these same words will be used in the celebration of the Supper of the Lord. Thus Mark suggests that the Eucharist has to lead us to share. It is the bread of life which gives us courage and leads us to face the problems of people in a different way. Not from outside, but from inside. In the way of describing the facts, Mark recalls the Bible in order to illuminate the meaning of the facts. To feed the hungry crowds in the desert. Moses was the first one to do it and to ask the people to organize themselves and sit down in groups of 50 or 100 reminds us of the census of the people in the desert after they left Egypt. In this way, Mark suggests that Jesus is the new Messiah. The people of the communities knew the Old Testament, and for one who understands well, a few words suffice. In this way they discovered the mystery which surrounded the person of Jesus. Jesus forgets to rest in order to serve the people. What example does this set for myself? If we shared what we have today, there would be no hunger in the world. What can I do? Am I personally involved in serving and loving others? Or is my effort just symbolic gesture for me? In his days, uprightness shall flourish, and peace in plenty till the moon is no more. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea from the river to the limits of the earth.